Hi, it's Matt Walsh from the Adventure Imaging team from Google with the demo of our project. Now, you remember Zork, right? You know, the text adventure game by Dave LeBlanc, Mark Blank, Tim Anderson, and Bruce Daniels? Starting as a wildly popular mainframe game developed at MIT, Zork fever spread to virtually everyone's home computer just in time for the personal computer revolution in the 80s. Its imaginative virtual world and surprisingly capable language interface dazzled a generation of programmers, including yours truly, some to create their own interactive realms. We never got to see Zorg, not with our eyes anyway, given what computers could do in 1982. Today, the rendering technology has arrived. But what exactly should we draw? What does Zork, all its items and rooms, look like? A group of Googlers wondered, what would happen if we asked a computer that very question? And now we're going to show you what it told us. Well, here we are playing Zork, standing in a field west of the White House, as usual, except now we can see it and its leaflet-bearing mailbox. Google's Imogen generated this image by reading the same exact, well, almost exact, more on that later, in-game descriptions that a human player would see. Voila, we have one computer's interpretation of another computer's game. Okay, well, let's play. Hmm, what's inside that mailbox? In Zork, you pick up stuff, and we chose to render your inventory items separately, with each item also rendered in Imogen. We had to learn how to monitor game state to do this, more on that later. Okay, before we break into the house, I'll take you on a little tour of the surrounding forest. Our project plays the entire original version of Zork with all the puzzles, loot, and countless ways to die that you remember. The imagery would normally take much longer to render than you see here, but using a reasonably good caching scheme, we can make the game feel snappy. As we make our way to the rainbow, we see some lovely outdoor scenes that match what one might expect. One figures the model has been trained against various outdoor scenes, but it's a profound experience to encounter a familiar yet otherworldly control panel on top of Flood Control Dam Number 3, or the gritty ambiance of its maintenance room. And then there's that moment when you see a modern plastic water bottle in the kitchen that seems entirely out of place, yet totally logical when you put yourself in Imogen's shoes. But wait, there's more. Imogen lets us apply countless different styles. The whole, the White House, painted by Rembrandt, photographed in daguerreotype, or as a German encyclopedia entry. We've wasted countless hours trying all the ones we could think of and hope you do too. For now, let's visit the coal mine watercolor style. And now, like a lot of things, this turned out to be trickier than we expected. One would think, gee, let's just stream the text from the game into Imogen and ride off to the sunset. But then we realized it wasn't that simple. For example, when you turn on the lamp, Zork tells you the brass lantern is now on. A human player integrates that with what they've read so far and naturally evolves their mental picture of the game. We could similarly try and mutate previous game output with each update, but that quickly becomes treacherously complicated. Instead, we modified Zork itself to cooperate with Imogen. Now, Zork sends out-of-band structured and tailored for rendering metadata after each turn. As we gained confidence in Zill, Zork's arcane mutation of a mutation of the Lisp language, we realized we could do lots of other fun and useful things. We could iterate over and render the inventory separately. Things Zork knows but doesn't tell the player could be accessed to improve our portrayal of rooms. We could even show the number of turns, death, and score in our own UI. Also, sometimes Zork was too wordy, and we used Google's Lambda to dynamically summarize descriptions to a length that Imogen could digest. There's tons more to do. We want to improve multi-scene continuity so that the house won't look completely different depending on which side you're standing. And with a little love, we can make most of the Infocom game library also work. Here's Zork 2, for example. Beyond playing these masterpieces in a new way, we hope our project gives a fun way to stimulate ideas in the generative imagery field. But for now, we hope you'll join us to go to Hell and Back in a medieval style. Thanks for watching.